Welcome back to the Sixth Gear Garage, where I'm currently building one decent 1980 Toyota out of two really crappy 1980 Toyotas. You're looking at the better of the two here. I'll be reusing pretty much everything you see here. The cab was pretty bad, so it went goodbye. The 20R engine sat out in the open for years, so I pulled it out and we checked out the inside of that motor last week. I'll be using the cab and the engine from the other 1980. Today's plan is to pull off this bed. So then I can strip everything off of this frame and clean and paint it and get the cab and engine from the other truck over to here. First, let's get some of these miscellaneous things out of here, like fuel lines. Some of these brake lines can stay for right now and the transmission needs to go. Well, that was pretty heavy. Let's take a minute to talk about trannies. Oh, I can't say that anymore. Transmissions. Not that there's anything wrong with trannies. This is the W50, the optional five speed for this 1980 truck. And you can see it's so heavy because it has a steel case. Um, over here, we have a W55. This was out of the 80s two wheel drive 22Rs. And this was out of the 1987, the white one, uh, I rescued from the woods a while back. And this one has an aluminum case. Now, you can use one in the other. However, uh, despite being nearly the same dimensions, uh, the shifters are even pretty close to coming out in the same uh, position here, same lengths. The only difference that you're gonna have to accommodate for is where the mount sits. So you can see this mount here sits about right under where the speedo cable comes out. Uh, over here, you can see this mount sits back a couple of inches from where the speedo cable comes out. Uh, you're gonna have to modify either the mount itself or most likely be easier to just modify this steel plate to bring it back a couple of inches if I did want to use this W55 in this truck. I've still never driven the truck or heard the truck run obviously so I don't know if this is good. The oil looked fine when I drained it. I'm hoping it's good, fingers crossed, but if not, I'm keeping this W55 as a backup. Uh, while we're talking about trains, uh, transmissions, over here we have uh, a couple more options. These are for the four-wheel drive trucks, but hey, well, I happen to have all these transmissions sitting here. Let's go over these really quick. This is the G-Series transmission. I believe it's a G52, could be a 54, but it is out of a 22R uh, four-wheel drive truck. Uh, you can see the transfer case here is in the back and it does not have the top shift. This has the forward shift for the transfer. Take note of that, come over here. This is the one everybody wants. Well, aside from the R151F, this is the W56 transmission. Now the W56 is what came on the 22 RE trucks and it's about 33% stronger, they say, than the G series. So if you're really building something you're gonna use off-road, W56 is the one that you want. Now notice the shifter position on this one. You got your five-speed here and your transfer right here, and it is above the transfer case. Notice this shifter is moved back. It's not up here like this one is. And transfer case shifter is not over the transfer case. So this is ideal because not only is it stronger, but you can uh, stack these and get yourself an extra low crawler gear. Here is Toyota Trannies Transmissions uh, 101 Quick Crash Course. Like I said, I don't have the R151F. That's out of the turbo trucks, and that is the most desirable. So I'm getting this bed ready to pull off, but I'm looking at the damage under here, and I don't know if you heard the story. I think I mentioned it in one of the first videos in this truck. Uh, this truck was owned by someone who liked to uh, drink, and on his trips home from the bars, things would always get wild, and he would drive off the road. And that's why the uh, right side of the truck was always smashed in over here. He would just hit everything. 
Uh, not Michael Burbank, the guy I got it from, the guy he got the truck from. It was already a parts truck by the time Michael got it. So I'm wondering what happened over here. This whole section of the bed is gone. And I'm guessing maybe the wheel fell off at some point because look at this, everything here is pushed back. Even this is bent up. It should be down at a 90. All the way back to here. Look at that, look how that metal's just twisted. So I'm thinking a wheel must have fallen off at some point to do this kind of damage. Yet this is the bed I'm choosing to save because I'll show you why. All that rust. The door's about to fall off, it's so rusty. So much rust, even up under here is rusty. There's holes. Uh, this, these hooks are falling off like loose teeth. All the way around the back. I do want to try and save this tailgate because it has the old school Toyota font, which I like, but we'll see. That's going to be a challenge. I may run the other tailgate for the time being. But all the way around, this bed is very rusty. Even though it's not smashed in on this side, I think I'd rather deal with a little bit of body work than deal with a lot of rust. And you're not going to see much inside because it's full of parts right now, but uh, here. There, there's a good view of what the floor looks like. And on this bed, we have very minimal rust. And the inside is actually really solid with the exception of the corners over here, over there, and a really heavy rust spot right there where something may have ate through the paint. So that's why I'm gonna go with this bed and save it. Even though this is a pretty big damage area, I really feel more confident in repairing this and fabricating this somehow than messing with all that rust on the blue bed. And that's why I'm pulling these mud flat brackets off right now. Just so when I set this bed down on the floor or whatever I, wherever I find to put this bed, I don't bend these brackets up any worse. So I'm trying all different kinds of screwdrivers and trying to clean out all the dirt that's in those holes. I'm such an idiot. I'm so used to the second gen trucks. I didn't realize the first gen trucks aren't screws, they're bolts. And they go through the back of the bed there. So I just noticed this. And the exhaust I pulled off a couple of videos ago. Look at this muffler. It's been repaired with, uh, this looks like old school metal coffee cans. Not bad. Bed bolts have been removed. A score on each side. They were a little bit rusty, but not too bad. I'm sure they're going to be a lot worse on the Ohio bed over there. Now, this is ready to come off. However, I'm going to have to put some hooks under here, under the bed rails here on the side. And because this side has been robbed of most of its structural integrity down here, the whole corner is gone. It's really flimsy. You can see how much I'm moving it there. So I don't want to put any extra stress on this that I don't have to. So I went back in the uh, pole barn and dug out the original tailgate that went with this bed. And there, that stiffened it up a little bit. By the way, maybe some of you viewers know, these are both 1980 trucks long beds. This one has the newer Toyota style logo on the back, whereas this one over here, it has the old school font on it. Anyone know why one would have the new style and one would have the old style and what determined 
which tailgate each truck got. They're both the latch ones. Neither one have the handle in the middle. Let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas. All right, here's where it might get sketchy. The plan is to lift up the hoist, the bed's detached from the frame, get it off the frame, roll the frame out, roll dollies under bed, be able to move everything around. Seems sturdy. Oh, not sturdy at all. Hang on. I am on the hook here. I don't want to put all that weight on this hook. I'd rather be on this rail. There we go. Lift off. All right, we've got a lot more lift on the front right corner than anywhere else. Let's go back down. This right about there. This strap is a lot tighter than this strap, and you can see the front right and the rear left of the bed are going up. The bed's actually deforming right now. So let's tighten this a little bit, let's see if we can square it up. That's a little better. Oh, all right, we're off. So we're turning back now. This back corner is real low. So we can see what the problem is. The problem is right about here. Let's go up a little bit higher. Look at that frame. I've never seen a frame this nice. Look at this gas tank. The screws in the sending unit, they're not even
corroded it. Amazing. Thanks again to Mikey from the Shop Spot for letting me borrow this beautiful rig. Uh, otherwise, there'd be no way I could do a frame off restoration here in my residential garage. But I am gonna ask for some help to put the bed back on the frame so I don't smash it into the cab. And now it's time to follow rule number one of the garage. And that's to have my wife's parking spot clear by the end of the day. Next time, I'll get to work on cleaning and stripping down the frame. Thanks for watching.